let me guess. You're probably watching this video today on a computer, tablet, cell phone, maybe some other device. Do you know who made that possible? Hmm. I think you're right. An engineer made it possible. An engineer is a person who studies how and why things work the way that they do. They create many, many, many solutions to solve all of the problems we experience every single day. Engineers are also the ones who dream big. They dream up all of the things that you use every day, from toys and electronics to tools and other household items. You might even think of an engineer as simply just a curious person that is determined to solve a problem. Another thing that you need to know about engineers before we get too far is that their determination is what helps them to persevere through any obstacles that come their way. We call this determination and perseverance a growth mindset. So go ahead, take a moment, put on your engineering hat with me, and we're gonna use our growth mindset today to solve our own problem. So get ready. As engineers, we're going to follow a very specific process when problem solving. And that process is called the engineering design process. The engineering design process is a series of steps that engineers follow to come up with a solution to a problem. Let's look at each of these steps just a little bit closer because we're gonna need those when we're solving our own problem later on. The very first step of the engineering design process is to ask. Simply ask a question. Define your problem. Maybe you might ask, who does this problem affect? How does it affect them? Why is this problem important for us to solve? Is it important for us to solve? And as you begin to answer these questions, you start to identify and develop your criteria and constraints. You'll develop your criteria by asking yourself, how am I gonna know when this problem is solved? What is the goal for my solution? And by by identifying your constraints, you might ask yourself, what obstacles am I going to face here? What are some limitations I might have? And after you ask those questions and answer them, you begin to imagine. And here's a secret. This is the fun part. This is where you get to be creative. You begin researching current solutions for your problem. Maybe they have some, maybe they don't. And if they do have some solutions, Maybe those solutions don't work very well and you thought of a way to make that solution even better. Maybe there's no solution at all for your problem and so it's your job to brainstorm a brand new one. At this point, you select your solution. And after you have it selected, you get to start planning it out. In the plan stage, you create a very detailed design plan. And in your design plan, you'll probably want to draw a model with labels. You probably will also want to include a list of the materials that you might need for the next step, which is to create. Once you have that list of materials, go ahead and gather them because you're gonna start building your prototype. And as you're building, you might want to test and evaluate your prototype along the way. After your prototype is created, you can work to improve your prototype. By improving it, you're going to modify or adjust it as needed. Maybe it worked perfectly. Maybe it didn't work so well. Maybe it didn't work at all. But at this step, you're going to make your prototype work. After you create your prototype and you've improved your prototype to the best of your ability, you're going to share it with your peers or maybe share it with experts in that field of science. By communicating your results, you're going to receive some great feedback to make your design even better. One thing you should know about the engineering design process is that this process is iterative. Iterative? What does that mean? That means that we can repeat the steps as many times as needed, making improvements along the way as we learn from our failures. Remember, as Thomas Edison once said, I have not failed. 
I have only found a thousand ways that won't work. I bet he had a growth mindset. Learning from our failures ensures that we can uncover new design possibilities to arrive at the best solution possible. Engineers persevere through this process every day as they solve the many, many problems that we face. Many times, their solution involves designing some sort of product, like a machine or even a computer code. And that product has to meet very specific criteria and it has to accomplish a certain task. Different types of engineers solve different types of problems. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at a few different kinds of engineers. One type of engineer is an aerospace engineer. I wonder if you know what an aerospace engineer does. Think about those words, arrow and space. Does that give you a clue? I bet it does. An aerospace engineer designs, develops, and helps to manufacture different types of aircraft, like rockets. Another type of engineer is a civil engineer. Those engineers design and supervise the construction of roads, buildings, airports, levees, and even bridges. We use these things every single day. Another type of engineer is a computer engineer. I bet you can guess what they do. That's right, they develop new computer hardware and software. They also can design new systems and machines, like a robot, that would rely on a computer to operate. Electrical engineers invent, create, improve, and fix the many types of electronic devices we use all the time, like tools or other types of equipment. A mechanical engineer researches, designs, manufactures, and tests any kind of mechanical thing you can think of, like a tool, a toy, maybe even a roller coaster. And guess who that last engineer I'm thinking of is? Hmm, are you sure? Yep, that's right. The last engineer I'm thinking of is you. You can be an engineer too. So, now that we know a little bit more about the engineering design process and the different types of engineers that use this process, let's become engineers ourselves. Pretend for just a moment that we live here. What do you notice about the house in this picture? What do you notice about where the house is located? That's right, it's a small wooden house and it's located on a beach. I see a large body of water, I'm thinking that's the ocean, right next to the house. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? I mean, who wouldn't want to live there? Splashing in the ocean water, playing soccer in the sand, that would be wonderful. But remember, at the beginning of this video, I told you we would have a problem to solve. Unfortunately, a hurricane is coming and it's coming straight for our house. We have to figure out how to prevent our house and everything inside of our house from being destroyed by the hurricane that's headed our way. What are we going to do? How are we going to solve this problem? Do you have any ideas? Why, of course you do, you're an engineer. To get started, you'll want to write down our problem in a notebook or a journal. Then interview a friend or maybe even a family member to learn more about a hurricane, a storm surge, or extreme flooding that they may have experienced throughout their lifetime. In your notebook, write down some of the emotions that they felt or some of the damages that they described. This will help create empathy while learning more about our problem. This knowledge will aid us throughout the process as you work to engineer your solution.